Morning, good people, good runners of the internet. It is April 2nd, and we have the last first run review before my marathon, four days, no, five days out. So on the top of the box here, we have, well, we have two boxes, but on the top box, on top of the box, which has the edge, we have the sky in here. So the sky, and I put it back in here because this is like a radioactive weapon. I don't want it too close to me. I don't want to see it. I don't want to touch it. I don't even want it near me. This thing was fast, probably the fastest marathon racing shoe that I've tried. And I've tried over 10 of them. I think this might be my 12th or 13th when we crack open the edge here. And when I put this thing on, I ripped off a six mile workout. So I think 12 miles total, six of those miles at a race pace, I think I dropped down to 530s, 540s at the end. And this thing was feeling really good. It reminded me a lot of the Vaporfly and the way Asics breaks down these racing shoes, right? They have the sky here, which is supposed to be for runners who go faster by opening up their stride length. And they have the edge, which is supposed to be for runners who go faster by picking up their feet a little more, increasing their cadence. Now, I don't really believe any of that. I like to see how the shoes are when we run in them and get the miles in them. And today on the schedule we have, and let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at the Daniel's running formula. This is the wrong page. I put the bookmark on the wrong page. All right. We have five days out, the second quality session of the week. He's telling us to do four by 1200 with two minutes of jogging in between. I think I'm actually gonna change this to a three by one mile. We'll see, seven miles total. We are in the sharpening phase of marathon training. So if you look at some of these other workouts we've done, 22 miles right with six or with eight miles of threshold we've done some crazy things and now five days out we're getting a little bit of a break here only three miles of quality work and so i do not like using the tape Ooh, i almost said it i do not like using the t word on this channel i'm trying something different out here i'm trying to call this the sharpening phase and let me know what you guys think about it right because your mileage comes down and your race readiness comes up as your intensity stays the same and it looks like the tip of the spear this is what we're trying to be sharp let me know what you guys think of that also share all your favorite pre-race rituals what are your favorite things to do on the week before your marathon race because i need some help last night i was deep in the let's run forums looking at my conversions for pace capability it's terrible so let me know what are your favorite things to do to keep yourself from going crazy i am super glad that we have some new shoes to break into so enough talking let's rip open the box and see what this edge is all about i guess so cracking open the edge here and it seems that the trend on the market is that all of the popular running brands, well, I don't know about popular, but all of the big running brands, Asics, Nike, Saucony, Adidas, New Balance. So those would be the big five, Asics, Saucony, Adidas, Nike, New Balance. Yeah, those would be the big five. They all now have two racing shoes, two marathon racing shoes. So Asics here, got the edge in the sky. Let's take a look. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> they sent me Bandit Socks, the company who I ordered this from. That's cute. Let me know if you want a pair of bandit socks. I'm not gonna out which website I bought this from, but Andrew Midlife Runner did give me the tip. Now, boom, I can't give this too much of a bada boom because we basically already saw this exact shoe in the sky. It looks identical from the top. It looks identical from the side. The main difference is where they've placed the plate and the foam. Also, one thing that I noticed online, which is super interesting between these two shoes, is they've gone with a different rubber color, which is probably the most random way you could differentiate a shoe, especially because in the pictures online and when you're looking at these two, there's no real way to tell which is which. I think I'm already having a hard time telling which is the edge and which is the sky. So we might need to, where's my notebook? Yeah, I think we might need to do something to change that. This is the, okay, this is the meta speed edge.
Okay. I think that's better. So Asics Metaspeed Edge here, the marathon racing shoe designed for high cadence runners. Now, this is a framework that Asics uses to justify having two shoes, two marathon racing shoes in their lineup. Nike doesn't so much differentiate by foot strike or running style, but between the Vaporfly and the Alphafly, there are some differences that make the Vaporfly a little bit better for cadence runners and the alpha fly a little bit better for stride runners but with those shoes there's more of a difference in the geometry and as i'm looking at the edge in the sky here i'm not seeing too much of a difference in geometry it's really going to be about where the plate is placed so let's take a look at these i'm glad i marked it okay edge here and then sky here the way the main way you can tell that they're different is look at where this yellow and black thing is set up on both of them. So underneath the yellow or between the yellow and the black, that's the plate. All right. So you can see in the edge, we get more foam above the plate in the sky. You get more foam under the plate. And then also if you look at the geometry, so you can see where this line is running through both of these guys here. So you can see the plate is more towards the middle here on the sky then the edge it's really up close to the foot and the back and then it scoops down in the front so with my experience with the vaporfly having a super soft compressive foam that's what gives me that feeling that i want to run a little bit faster versus running with more power versus running with a harder stride or a more open stride so this should give me that quick turnover feeling where this foam is just encouraging me to pick up my feet and move them a little more now like the sky not a ton of rubber coverage on the back here this is not going to be a durable racing shoe if you want a durable racing shoe that's going to be new balance sc elite Saucony endorphin pro 4 and again very narrow heel not a stable shoe the sky paris was not a stable shoe we'll have to see how the lockdown is but one weird thing is from the top this actually looks like it might be a little wider i don't think so they probably fit the exact same no it really does look i don't know if you guys can see this but the toe box on the edge and the way that it's shaped out in the front does look a little bit wider. Now, this is not a sky versus edge comparison. Now, I want to do a full comparison between these two, but it looks like the sky tapers a little bit more, which is weird. Now, I really don't want to be talking too much about the shoe because I'm eager to rip off this last workout. But the last thing that differentiated the sky from all the other crop of marathon racing shoes that we have inside is the light weight. Now, the way that they get that lightweight is, again, we talked about the narrow foam. They didn't do anything with this foam that feels like a mind-blowing, different, life-changing experience. It's just good in all the ways I want a racing foam to be. It's lightweight, it's fast, it's bouncy. And then the way that they get the lightweight with the entire shoe is, of course, you have an upper that's airy. It's almost like nothing is there. But then that narrow heel, that means you get a lot less foam than some of the other racing shoes that are more designed for stability. So this is definitely, it's like a Hornet, right? Definitely designed to be a killer fast shoe. It's not designed to have you heel striking through a four hour marathon. It could be a good option if you're a two hour half marathoner and are going to be going all out for a PR, but definitely a shoe that rewards some good mechanics, at least in the sky and in the design that we're seeing in the edge here, reflecting a lot of those same capabilities. So trade-offs are lighter weight, and I'll drop this on a scale in a second here, but lighter weight, less stability, less overall comfort. I do have to say though, I didn't have any discomfort with the upper of the sky. We'll see how the edge is. But man, I'm just eager to get this get this last workout in. I'm going to drop this on the scale super quickly, and then we're going to rip off some pace. And I think after today, what we might do, yesterday we did the full plated train of breakdown. I think today we're going to do a full carbon fiber plated racing shoe breakdown in the office at some point. So stay tuned for that later in the video. Let's drop this on the scale and then just go out there and rip. All right, guys, left shoe, quickest weigh-in of all time, 194.8 grams, very light shoe, right shoe. And we had to tattoo the shoe box, too, so I could tell. All right, right shoe, 196.6 grams, so good QA on Asics. These things are identical weight. Love to see it. And man, this is a, not identical, but nearly identical. And this is a nice colorway. And 
I know we had to write on it to tell them between the edge and the sky, but if you're going to make your shoes look the same, make them look the same amount of fire. And this is a fire colorway. I absolutely love how these things look. There's some colorways where you look at the shoe and you want to go fast. That's why I don't buy black racing shoes, really, unless I, I have to. I have a pl- pair of black Vaporfly 2s, but this is a f- go fast color for sure. Lightning McQueen, baby. All right, let's lace these things up and go rip. So today is our last opportunity to really run fast before the race. And I said this was our last first run before the race. I'm not sure if I'll, I might bring out one or maybe one more shoe, new shoe, but this is definitely the last marathon racer I'll be running in until Sunday. So plan for today is let it rip at threshold pace. And so Daniel's had this workout programmed as, what was it? four by one T one four by one or no four by 1200 meters at threshold but in other plans in the book and for the plans he had which with specific mileage levels above 100 for peak which I hit he had it programmed as a three by one mile so I think I'm going to do this as a three by one mile with the two minute rest also I might need to bring out the sky real quick because the fit of this does feel a little bit different than the sky and I do think that the it maybe fits a little shorter than the sky which is interesting let me bring that out real quick all right sky confirming look sky sky okay all right so let's do this this little side by side here and you can tell again because well because I wrote on it but also black rubber on the edge red rubber on the sky and the sky just feels a little bit more comfortable for me on stepping I don't I don't know why that is the fit just feels more comfortable the contouring of the foam just feels a little bit more comfortable it also feels like I have a little less under my forefoot in the sky in that the geometry is a little bit just better I mean I'm just standing here but it just feels like the geometry is a little bit better in the sky all right, well, I wasn't planning to do this, but I have them both on my feet, so now we need to. All right, guys, we have to do this. I don't want to, but we have to. Edge versus sky. <laughs> Edge versus sky. Walk test. Sky feels a little lower. Yeah, I can feel the ground a little bit more in the sky, which is on my right foot, left foot with the edge. I think I feel more of a rocker in the edge on my left foot, but let's do this little jog test. All right guys, I wasn't planning to do this, but one jog, everybody knows the rules. Asics, Meta Speed Edge versus Asics, Meta Speed Sky. These are both the edge, but they look the same. Nobody will tell the difference. All right, let's do it. Muffy on the track. Quick insights here, right? On the edge, midfoot feels a little bit wider. It also felt a little bit firmer. I'm not sure if that's because I have 10 miles in the sky already, but it seems like I'm compressing this foam a little bit less, which is surprising for a cadence shoe, but maybe that has something to do with the plate geometry here. I also felt more of a rocker sensation, a firm rocker in the edge than the sky. But all right, let's get this real run in the edge. Man, this thing looks sick. DJ, drop that beat. One more thing, it feels like I'm getting some tension on the left Achilles with the edge than the sky. The edge just feels a little bit <laughs> worse overall for me. And let's let's run in it to see. But yeah, I don't know. The edge just... I told you this with the Invincible the other day. Some shoes just immediately I can tell work for me. And some don't. The Sky Paris felt great immediately. Edge, I'm not too sure. Let's, let's get these miles in to tell the... So there are lots of different theories on what the best sharpening period technique is. Do you pull the mileage down 60% then drop to 40 do you keep it at the same level until the week before? When do you run the last quality session? Do you do a 23 weeks out or two weeks out? The way I did it, I was rocking with 22 and 23 mile long runs for most of the block. And then at the end, I dropped my last long run 
to a 20 two weeks out. And then on Sunday, I did a 12 mile lash run. That took about an hour 40 minutes. I was actually planning to do maybe a little workout in that with one mile on, one mile off. But instead, because Reevesy Boy wasn't sleeping, I took the stroller out and that kind of blew up my legs a little bit. So there's no workout involved in that one. But I'm curious to hear from you all, what is your favorite last pre-race workout? Do you have a go-to? I think the general consensus is typically you wanna do three miles or 5K of work max on the last week before the race. But I'm curious, do you, any of you guys do anything different on the last week? Do you do, is there anybody out there who does like a one by seven miles two days before the race and that got you a 235 PR or something? So let me know that and also those rituals. I gotta know, what do you do to calm that pre-race anxiety? I'm not gonna sit here in front and act like I'm Mr. Cool, okay? I'm not, I'm not Mr. Cool this week. I am. I'm locked into race mode. I want to have a good performance, and you guys know how that is, right? We can get in our heads a little bit. So what do you do to get yourself out of your head or to make your head a little bit more of a comfortable place to live for a week or two? All right, last workout, man. I don't want the, the block to be over, but after this, it's essentially over. In the words of the great stove god cooks, the bricks are in the door panel. We just gotta drive him home. That one is for my guy, Rock Coddington, who told me to dial back the rap. Asics Metaspeed Edge Paris, the best shoes for taking out the trash. So I knew this morning, I didn't want to do a whole song and a dance with the Mint Hill shoe market out here before the run. I just wanted to rip and boy, did we let it rip. Okay, seven miles, average pace 639, but we hit those reps hard. 555, 534, 519. I think that's my fastest mile. And I always like, I was asking you guys, I was asking you guys, what? Well, I was saying accent. That's like how they say it back in Lowell, Massachusetts, where I grew up. But I was asking you guys what your favorite thing is to do on the week before a race. I always like to get at least the week or the week before my fastest mile that I'm capable of in a workout. And 519 is definitely not what my one mile PR would be. But in a three by one mile workout, it feels good to drop a five teens at the end. My previous one mile PR was a 526 and I've never actually gone all out. So I could probably go, my guess is 440s, 450s if I went all out. But man, that felt good. Beautiful day, five days out. I'm gonna go a little crazy with each day that we get closer to the race, but it's good to get a fast workout and a nice pair of racing shoes to remind us what we are capable of before the race. So the, these shoes are fast, man. And similar to how I felt after the Sky Paris, this is up there for one of the fastest new racing shoes. So let's pop these off and do a breakdown. Now I need to mention, and all the people out there who told me, like my guy, Sean Richard Robbins, go up half a size, go to that 11. You guys might be right. This is definitely a shorter, shoe i got 10.5 and i can feel right here my toes and it's specifically my ring finger toe <laughs> right at the end of this one here or no not ring finger pointer finger toe right at the edge of this toe box and andrew told me too midlife that he went up half a size but i i rarely change the size unless there's an availability issue and so I just went with my standard. Oh, look at that. We got bird poop on the bottom here. But I went with my standard size in this. Might have been a mistake, but you know what? Toenails, they'll grow back. So it's okay. 
but similar fit to the pit, the sky. The I remember this pointer finger toe felt a little bit cramped after I ran in the sky, but I thought that was actually from the Mach 6. I didn't realize it was from the sky. So if you're gonna get either of these shoes, you probably wanna go a half size up from what you would normally do in a Nova Blast or a Saucony or a Nike or a New Balance. Go a half size up. Sorry guys. <laughs> I should probably bring that trash back up, huh? All right, guys, so seven mile workout in the ASICS Metaspeed Edge Paris. Now, this is the third edition of the Edge. They went Edge, Edge Plus, and then this, which is Edge 3. And we got the Suburban Symphony going, so we are gonna have to move, all right. All right, so we are live in the greenhouse here. I don't know how the sound is gonna be. It might be a little bit echoey, but we're gonna keep it short and then go into the office. And it's funny because Tuesday is my workout day typically, and it's also the day where the lawnmowers come and the garbage disposal service comes. So you can get a little bit dicey here, but three minute breakdown, and then I wanna go deep into how this shoe compares to all the others. It felt in this shoe like I had a lot more foam in the forefoot and midfoot than the other fast racing shoes. So Takumi Sen, Vaporfly, and even the Paris. And you really can feel that difference of the plate curvature here. It feels much more like a rocker shoe. And if you look at the geometry on the bottom here, it's not too much of an aggressive roll. It's definitely not the most aggressively rocker shoe I have, not as aggressive as the CLX1. And also, I really want to try the Saucony Endorphin Elite. That's the one shoe that I would consider racing in that I didn't try during the cycle. So we'll have to bring that into the office in the summer. And wow, it is hot in here. Greenhouse in North Carolina. That's not what you want when it's 80 degrees out. But if you take a look at the angle of the plate here, and you can see how it curves down, I could really feel that. It almost felt like this was the rocker that I was getting. And so I haven't talked a lot about plate geometry on the channel. I tend to not try to focus on the technology and more about the ride experience, but this is a case where the technology has a huge impact on the ride experience because of how aggressively this plate is angled. And I talked a little bit about the midsole foam technology when I reviewed or did the first run in the Paris. It's bouncy, it's not the softest, not the firmest. It's nothing nothing that's gonna blow you away if you've run in any racing shoe from 2020 onward before. It doesn't feel like anything completely new, it just works. And the beauty of this shoe, similar to the Paris, is the lightweight you're gonna get. You have a nice narrow platform, and I say nice and narrow because that's what lets it have such a lightweight. So you have the narrower platform here. I do have to say the midfoot felt a little bit wider and then the forefoot felt much more like those other marathon racing shoes where you get a little bit of that curve and some decent stability. And so if you are a midfoot to forefoot runner, I think the shoe is gonna work really well for you. I didn't notice it encouraging me picking up the pace or picking up my cadence more than any other racing shoe. If anything, I felt that the angle of the plate here maybe extended my stride and made me want to dig in a little bit more to kick farther back. I think rockered shoes like this can do that. And the way that they make me more efficient is by making me dump my hips at an angle that makes me land closer up to the forefoot here. So this shoe is one that encourages a midfoot strike. I think the sweet spot for landing is probably right about here. Definitely not optimal for heel striking. And the first few miles where I was at that warm up pace, I felt like it was a little bit awkward, a little bit clunky. And frankly, most of these racing shoes are gonna be. So that's not anything different with the Edge Paris here. But as I warmed up into those faster reps, it really started feeling good. Natural ride. And when I say natural ride, natural for a racing shoe, there's nothing too weird, nothing too gimmicky about this shoe but a really nice, aggressive feeling forefoot. So I'm gonna have to do a head-to-head -head running comparison. Not today, because we capped it at seven miles. I was actually thinking before the run, maybe I would go to eight to 10 miles, but I'm going to follow Dr. Daniel's book as he prescribed it. Not gonna freestyle here, see how it turns out. But I was thinking of going longer and maybe doing a comparison today. I'm not gonna do that. We will do the head-to-head -head comparison with the Sky later in the week. But I can tell you this feels a little bit more cushioned under the forefoot here because that plate 
is lower and the sweet spot is a little bit further up. So nice and lightweight, aggressive, a little bit shorter in the front here, but did feel secure in the upper. Overall, a really fast racing shoe. Now, I am absolutely frying in here. I need to replenish some electrolytes, get the recovery going, and then we will hit the office because I wanna do a comparison of this to some of the other racing shoes. As you requested, do an overview of the market, where this fits in, and which one of these shoes will be best for you. All right, see you in a bit. Good job, Greenhouse. All right, guys, so we are refueled and we brought the full array of racing shoes outside on the hood of the Jeep because I wanna do an overview of the market as requested by a few of you and let you know where the Edge and Sky Paris fit in. So another 30 second overview of the Edge today and also Sky, but Edge is lightweight racing shoe, not gonna be as protective for longer marathon runners, so above three hours, not gonna be the most protective shoe. A little bit more of an aggressive feeling geometry up in the front here, especially if you compare it to the Sky. This one just feels like the rocker, and I think it's because the geometry of the plate. It feels like it makes me wanna dump my hips, put me a little bit more on my toes, but also feels like the sweet spot is maybe midfoot. So landing midfoot, but then quickly gets me up to my toes, designed for faster turnover runners, higher cadence runners. And both of these shoes share that narrow platform, which again is gonna make them not the best for runners who are going above 334 hours in the marathon. Though they might be a viable choice for some of you if you are mid to four foot runners. Now, the way that I've laid out the rest of these shoes is front row here, more aggressive shoes, and then back row is not necessarily slower, and that's not what I mean when I say aggressive. Aggressive doesn't always mean faster, but more aggressive feeling shoes, a little bit less friendly for all foot strikes. And the back, more of the crowd-pleasing shoes. So Edge and Sky, specifically the Sky here, let's pull this one to the front. This one felt the most to me like the Nike Vaporfly. Both of these shoes here share that narrower platform, and both of these shoes have that Piba foam that compresses and gives you a nice release while still having a lighter weight. Now, the thing about the Paris shoes with this new FF Turbo foam, and I should have mentioned, or FF Turbo Plus, and I should have mentioned this earlier, is that it is not the most compressive foam. It's not super rigid. It's not super stiff as some of these other foams might be but it's also not gonna be the softest, most forgiving in the world. And so if you do want a softer racing foam, but lighter weight, that's where the Vaporfly comes in. These guys are fast shoes, both the Edge and the Sky, but they are not the softest feeling foam. And so if we're thinking about the rest of the market here, I think the two softest racing foam shoes we have are gonna be the Vaporfly and then the Diodora Gara. So I put this guy in the back row here. It is an aggressive shoe. You get a nice four foot geometry up here. One of the most aggressive feeling rockers, I think, but because of the caboose here, how much foam we have hanging off the back, it's a friendlier shoe for everyday running paces. For me at a 7.30 or an eight minute pace, this shoe felt the best, probably up there with the Saucony Endorphin Pro Series as feeling the friendliest for my daily training paces. All of these shoes up in the front here are shoes that I would not want to wear unless I had a workout or a race. So thinking about the other Nike shoe we have, the Alpha Fly, this is probably similar to, I'd say the Edge, if we're thinking about Sky versus Edge, the Alpha Fly would be similar to the Edge the sky would be similar to the vapor fly. And with the alpha fly here, it's interesting that they put the pods around here because that was the same sweet spot that we're getting in the edge, really rewards that midfoot to forefoot strike and then quickly get you on your toes and also a little bit of a firmer, more structured feel in the alpha fly compared to the vapor fly because you get that pod. This is not a firm shoe like a sock and endorphin shift. And I know my guy K guns, every time I bring up a firm, say the word firm, he's scared that a shoe is gonna ride like the endorphin shift, which I love, but not everyone loves that feeling. Alpha Fly is not as firm as that shoe, but it does have 
a little bit of a firmer ride in the forefoot because you get these air pods. So as I mentioned earlier, two shoes in the Nike racing lineup, just like we now have two shoes or we've had two shoes in the Asics racing lineup, Alpha Fly 3 is gonna be a little bit of even a more aggressive shoe. Oh, we got a B, hold on. Action cam, B action cam. But yeah, Alpha Fly for me is the shoe that you gotta put a little bit more power into it. So if we're thinking about cadence versus stride, and it's funny, I actually said the edge would be similar to the Alpha Fly, but I think the Alpha Fly here is actually the shoe you want if you're putting more power down into the shoe. If you're running faster, if you're running with a lower cadence but more force up in the forefoot, Vapor Fly here is that higher cadence shoe where it feels like you're floating along at certain paces. So not exactly the same way Asics does their products, but similar feeling geometry as the Edge. Now, next shoe, let's talk about the Hoka CLOX1 here. So both the Edge and the Sky are under 200 grams in my US Men's 10.5. They are the only two shoes we brought out here and two of the only shoes I own that are under 200 grams in my size. Vaporfly came in at about 207 grams, I believe. Hocus Yellow X1, on the other hand, this thing was up near 250, 260 grams in my US Men's 10.5, which puts it in the same range as a shoe like the Deviate Nitro 2 almost, or the Boston 12 or Saucony Endorphin Speed 4. So it has the weight of a racing shoe or the weight of a training shoe, but you get a ton of this racing foam in a really aggressive geometry. So this has the most aggressive underfoot geometry that I have out here. Now, I have not tried the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro 2 or the Socket Endorphin Elite, so those might compete with this for aggressive geometry. But if you look at the way the plate is in here, very similar to the edge, where again, you get rewarded for that midfoot to forefoot strike and it really quickly gets you up on your toes. So the reason I had this in the back as a more comfortable accommodating shoe is because even though it has an aggressive geometry, not the best for heel striking, it's really comfortable because of all the foam you get. And if I were gonna be running four hours for the marathon, three and a half hours versus 220, which is what these Edge and Sky shoes are designed for, 210 elite sub 220 marathoners, this guy is gonna be a lot more comfortable for spending time on feet. I did three hour or two and a half to two and 240 long run in this paced at about a 645 and then I also did some everyday miles and eight minute pace it was comfortable for all of that so really comfortable shoe probably the most underfoot comfort you'd get from any of these shoes and I'm specifying underfoot comfort because the upper and the heel landing make it not the most comfortable shoe in general but lots of underfoot comfort here so good option if you're going to be spending a lot of time on feet and you want that aggressive feel but with a little bit more cushion and protection no now the sun is coming out gotta make sure our lighting is calibrated correctly all right so moving on to some of the less aggressive options on the market than the edge and the sky and thinking about what makes these two more aggressive one of those things as we've talked about is that super narrow heel so three shoes that don't have a super narrow heel which will knock out here se elite v4 tier valkyrie elite carbon and adidas adios pro 3 these guys that i have set up in the back right here this is the trifecta of marathon racing stability so if you like the idea of having a more aggressive shoe that rewards this midfoot to forefoot strike like the edge, you want something for faster running, but you're not sure you want to fully commit to such a narrow lightweight platform. It's like a dance with the devil. It, you're going to be at the edge of your capabilities maybe, and I would be at the edge of my capabilities if I picked one of these shoes to race in and then was almost at the brink of blowing up and had to run with a little bit more of that everyday running form you'd be on the edge here because there's not much stability. So if you want something that's a little bit safer, that would be the New Balance SCLE V4. This is probably the safest marathon racing shoe because you get a nice wide base here and just like take a look at the edge versus the SCLE V4. And this is, I don't have a ruler out here, but this is probably a almost a full inch difference, just eye test, full inch difference in terms of how much width we're getting, the girth we're getting at the widest point of the rear here. And then also 
how much foam we get on the back. It's there, the Edge and Parrot Sky are okay for that, but the width here is just a big difference. And so, if you want something more stable, but still 100% Piba, still has a carbon fiber plate, still with a decently nice rolling geometry, that would be the New Balance SC Elite v4 so revamped fuel cell in here a little bit more aggressive than the last generation but still nowhere near the most aggressive racing shoe on the market and so this is it almost has a dual character because it's a shoe that i enjoyed for everyday running paces i could do that well but then to get the most benefit out of the foam when i wanted to run fast I had to be running at the top end of my fast speed. And so for a workout like today where I was doing 530, 520 pace miles, this phone would have responded really well. But then at my marathon paces at 6'2", 160 pounds, I didn't feel like I could put enough force down into this shoe. So this is going to be a good option for bigger runners if you need more stability or support or if you are fast elite elite fast and can compress this foam for the entirety of the marathon so new balance did a good job with this threading the needle of keeping some of the elements of the last versions of the sc elite that made it a nice shoe for recreational runners while upping its game as an elite marathon racing shoe also last thing i should mention low drop shoe and it feels like a low drop shoe so four millimeter drop you're getting a lot of cushion up here in the forefoot and that's one of the things that differentiates the edge from the sky, I didn't feel like I was getting as much cushion underneath my forefoot in the sky, which I prefer for faster running. And I'm gonna have to make a decision <laughs> in the marathon of whether I want something a little bit less protective, but faster or something a little bit more comfortable, but conservative. And that's a decision we all need to make, right? But SCLE V4 definitely has a lot of cushion underfoot, similar to the edge here. I could feel that cushion underneath my forefoot versus the sky, a little bit more, not necessarily ground feel, but a little bit more nimble up here in the front of the shoe. Now, next shoe in the stable trifecta here, Tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon. So I would go for this shoe over the edge or the sky if you want a little bit more support and stability, but a more aggressive forefoot rocker than the SC Elite gives. And of course, it's gonna be a little bit heavier than the Edge or the Sky here, but you get more rubber coverage. And so this guy is purpose built for bigger runners who need that stability and who run closer to the forefoot. So you can see that's where the rocker gets really aggressive. It's really only up here and the rest of the platform is pretty flat. If we take a look at the edge, you'll see we got a little bit more of a curve in the back, which actually makes this a better option for heel strikers. And I think I enjoyed this a little bit more for heel striking running than I did the Valkyrie Elite Carbon. It's also a little bit lighter weight, but this is not as supportive nearly as the tier here and tier is going to be the best option if you want that support but aggressive geometry up in the forefoot now adidas adios pro 3 one of the winningest marathon racing shoes of all time and as i was mentioning about the new balance sc elite v4 here also a shoe where adidas did a really good job threading that needle of making a product that works well for recreational runners as well as elites now I will mainly frame my experience with the shoe within the context of the Boston 12 because I have not gotten nearly enough miles in this thing to get the benefit from the foam. But in the Boston 12, the elements I love in that shoe that are present here, you got the continental rubber. And so this is going to be the best shoe out of the ones we have here in terms of grip, wet weather capabilities. I have to give a nod to the Socket Indoor from Pro 4 here though, which I'll bring out in a sec. I did a marathon time trial in the rain a few weeks ago and that thing was fantastic. But Continental here is second best rubber in the game. I did a comparison out here on the driver yesterday. We splashed some water versus uh, Deviate Nitro 2 versus Boston 12 and Deviate Nitro 2 actually took the cake. But this one is second best, really grippy, good for wet weather, and Light Strike Pro here, probably the densest foam out of all of these. Not necessarily the firmest feeling, but the densest feeling. You get that nice bounce, and it does soften up once you break it in. And so I know a lot of 330 marathoners who absolutely love the Audios Pro 3. Shout out to my guy, Brendan Wise. And so similar to both of those two shoes we just highlighted, this is gonna give you a lot more support than the Edge in the Paris. It also does feel 
more cushioned and protective than either of these shoes. Definitely more protective than the Sky here and a little bit more protective than the Edge, although the Edge, and it's not necessarily because the stack, the stack is only one or two millimeters difference in the Edge and the Sky, but that plate placement makes the edge feel like you get a little bit more comfort under the ball of your foot here, similar to the Light Strike Pro. And then you get a very aggressive four foot geometry here. And the sweet spot of this shoe, a lot of you guys have told me is midfoot to four foot again. So good option for midfoot to four foot runners who want a little bit more stability. Now to my favorite shoe in the category for recreational runners, not necessarily the shoe I'm going to pick for my marathon PR attempt, but the one that I believe works best for most people here, better than either the Sky or the Edge. These are two fast racing shoes, but I don't always want fast when I'm running a marathon. And this is the shoe that I picked for that marathon time trial because it blends elements of speed, support, and comfort. And so for that comfort, you get the best upper out here, this is by far the best upper out here. Second best is probably the Alpha Fly. And what these two share is that you get a full one piece construction. It's a sock like upper. And then this guy also, you get some slight stretch on the tongue. And then underfoot comfort, this Power Run PB foam is the perfect amount of soft with the carbon plate, just adds perfect amount of snap. And wherever they put it in here, just worked perfectly for my stride and works for a lot of people who've tried it. And you get a lot of comfort up in the forefoot specifically. Downside is narrow heel that can feel a little bit weird at certain paces, but it's not that it feels bad for heel striking, it's that it's just a little bit narrow. And so not gonna be as good stability as those three shoes, but what it lacks in stability and makes up for in comfort. And so that time trial I did, I came in at 255. I think this is probably the best shoe for sub three marathon attempt if you want something a little bit more on the comfortable side, one of these two shoes might be the best for that sub three if you want a little bit of a faster feeling, but not the fastest feeling shoe, but felt the most comfortable across a variety of paces. Great for daily training paces. I don't advise running in a plated trainer or plated racing shoe every day, but this is one of the best ones up there with the Diodora Gara for those paces and then really came alive toward that marathon pace and faster for me. I ended that 26.2 mile effort I did during training at around a six flat pace. And even on mile 26, running six flat pace on legs that have run 25 miles before, shoe felt great, felt like it was giving me enough pop and support. It was also soaking wet at that point and held up really well. So this one came in at about 240 grams, I believe. So not the lightest weight shoe, but you get a little bit more comfort from the shoe and a little bit more rubber for grip and durability. This should hold up pretty well in training. I brought my Pro 3 out here so we could show you this guy has about 300 miles and it's held up really well. So that's the Pro 4. This is a Pro 3. The reason I brought this out, not just to show you the rubber, but also because Saucony is still selling this shoe at $225. Last time I checked, let me know if you can find it on sale, but last time I checked, they're selling these two at the same price. And so this one's gonna have a little bit more of an aggressive feel than the Pro 4. The rocker feels stronger. Also, I should have mentioned they added power run HG in the Pro 4. This is 100% Power Run PB. And so if you liked the Pro 3, I got some of the similar vibes from the Edge today of that strong rocker. I think this foam might be a touch firmer and the shoe is definitely not as good for training paces. So this might be a nice upgrade for some of you. If you want something a little bit faster, maybe the Pro 3 was your first or second racer, but you want something a little bit faster, you don't want the Vaporfly, the Edge might be a nice upgrade as a next shoe to the Pro 3. And I know some of you have also mentioned, should I get the Pro 3 or the Pro 4? Pro 4 is gonna have a little bit more comfort. Pro 3 has a little bit more of that strong rocker, aggressive feel where you snap forward. So if you're comfortable racing in the Pro 3, I would get a fresh pair of that. If you want something a little bit more comfortable for your next race, I would go for Pro 4. Now, last shoe to talk about before we close it out, with the edge and the sky. Brooks Hyperion Elite. This is a little bit on the firmer side and if you compare the forefoot here to some of these other shoes, even just to the edge, you can see that the forefoot foam, the amount of foam we're getting in the Hyperion Elite isn't the most stacked. It's not the tallest shoe. 
I really liked the way that this foam activated at my fast running paces. I did a six by 800 meter workout where I, I think I started around six flat pace, worked down to 530, 540 pace. Shoe felt really good. It came alive at those paces. We also have a tester, Caden, on the subwell team who runs track at Yale, who normally runs his workout in, in track spikes and did some tests in this. And he said they protected his legs better than track spikes, but compared to some of the other racing shoes, out there that he's tried and he's gotten a lot of good miles in the Vaporfly. This wasn't as protective and my man Caden is a four minute miler. So I take everything he says seriously and this wasn't protective enough for his calves. So this might not be the best option for some of you guys for the marathon distance, but I think this is gonna be a really good shoe for the half marathon distance. I'm excited after I recover from this race to do some more fun tests across these shoes. There's no point of having all these shoes if we can't run in them. And so after we recover, we're gonna put this guy through the paces. All right, that is the overview of the market. Now, closing it out with the edge and the sky. My general thought is racers should feel good out of the box. And with all of these shoes here in the back, Every single shoe we have lined up here, actually Vaporfly not, but all the other shoes and not the Brooks, I have done at least one 20 mile long run in them and a structured workout. And these two guys in the front, I've done structured workouts. And these two have felt the fastest out of the box of any of these shoes other than the Vaporfly. And so with both of them, you're gonna get a little bit of that denser, more structured foam feeling in the forefoot than the Vaporfly, and probably a little bit better extra stability. And so if you're going for that sub three hour marathon or your marathon PR, and you don't want something as dangerous <laughs> as the Vaporfly here, as compressive, this is not a great shoe for bigger runners. That's where the Edge and Sky come in. I think this is gonna be, these two are gonna be the top option for bigger runners who want something fast. Now I haven't tried the Endorphin Elite, but out of these, for bigger runners who want something fast to go sub three, sub 250, sub 240, these are gonna be great options. The Adidas Adios Pro, I know a lot of you also like that, but this, these two are significantly lighter while it's in the edge in particular giving a decent amount of protection in the forefoot for midfoot and forefoot striking. So I'm impressed with both the edge and the sky. We've got to do a head to head comparison between these two this week. So I can give you more detailed thoughts on exactly who these are best for. But for thinking about stepping back here, looking at the whole market, those are going to be the lightest, the fastest feeling out of the box other than the Vaporfly. I was always a Vaporfly guy and I have my current half marathon PR in this shoe, but I've ruled this one out for my next race because it just doesn't have as much support as I want. And so we're probably gonna be looking at something else for the race. But there you have it, guys. This was a fun one to do. Let me know in the comments all your questions about comparing the edge and the sky. I wanna do a thorough analysis of these two. So anything I missed in this video, anything else you wanna see, please drop your questions below. As always, really appreciate you guys watching and I'll be back tomorrow with another video.